Hello everyone, you're welcome to Beamsy Styling YouTube channel and in today's tutorial we'll be learning how to draft a female pant trouser. If you're interested in this, kindly sit back and watch the video to the end. Please do well to help subscribe to our YouTube channel, turn on your notification bell so whenever a new video is posted, you will be notified. Please give this video a thumbs up. Also, do well to share to your friends. Now, let's get started. To start with, we need our basic drafting instrument, our pattern paper, curved ruler, tape roll, scissors, and our pencil. And also, we'll be needing our measurements. And the following measurements will be used in this draft, waist circumference, hip circumference, our tie, our round nail, round ankle, waist, to hip waist to knee, our trouser length and our crouch depth. These are the measurements that will be needed for this draft. Now, the first thing I did was to mark our border line, which will serve as the starting point for this draft. I just came down by one inch from the top of the pattern paper and drew a straight line. The next thing I going to do now is to mark our crouch depth, and to get the crouch depth, you take the hip measurement you are working with divided by 4. In this case, I'm working with hip 48 divided by 4 will give me 12. And so I marked my 12 inches from the top, the border line, and then I draw out my straight line. Once I'm done doing that, the next measurement I will take is my waist to nail. The waist to nail I'm working with here is 25 inches. I'm going to mark that at point 25 and then I will also draw out a straight line connecting the two points which I marked for my waist to nail. Next I will proceed to my hem line which is the trouser length and the trouser length I'm working with here is 44 inches so i'll mark my 44 like so and also draw out my straight line for the trouser length i'll connect the two points that i just marked together and draw my straight line which will serve as the aim of the trouser next i'll go ahead and label my lines my nail my trouser length my crouch depth and um, also the border line at the top will serve as our waist line next i'll proceed to the crouch depth line and then go up by two and a half inches you could go up by two and a half or two inches and that point will serve as our hip line i'll draw my straight line connecting the points together and that will serve as our hip line. Once we are done marking our horizontal lines, the next thing we'll do is to impute our circumference measurements on these lines that are marked out. Now we'll proceed to the crouch depth. On the crouch, we impute our tie measurement and our tie measurement divided into two plus one inches. The tie is divided into two because it, we, are work, we have two legs and each leg has its own tie. So the tie is divided into two for us to get the measurements used on the crouch line. You divide your tie into two plus one inches. Now we proceed to our hip, our hip line. At the hip line, the measurements we'll be using here is our hip measurement. And our hip measurement will be divided into four. This is because the hip is around our butt area. And this is just a round measurement that goes round. It's not like the tie that has separate legs. The hip is round the butt and it goes round like so. So that's why we are dividing it into four. So our hip divided by four plus one inches. Our hip divided by four 
plus one inches is what we'll mark on our hip line. In this case, I'm working with hip 48 and 48 divided by 4 is 12 inches. We'll mark the 12 plus 1 inches, make it 13. Making 13. So we'll go ahead and mark this hip measurement on the hip line, on the waistline, which is the border line, and also on the crouch line. We'll go ahead and mark this um hip divided by two plus one inch on the three lines, and then we'll connect with a straight ruler. The next thing we'll do now is to insert our waist measurement at the top of our pattern paper there, which serves as our border line. Our waist divided by 4 plus 1 inch is what we'll mark as our waistline. And then at that point, we'll connect our measurements, our waist measurements to our hip line, like so, with a slightly curved part of the curved ruler. It's not going to be too curvy. It's not going to be too curvy. We are going to connect the waist to the hip like so. The next thing we'll do is to come out at an angle 45 degree like so by one inch and then we connect that one inch to our hip line and also connect it back to our crotch, our crotch depth like so with a curve once we do that we have a, a trouser shaped out like so now the next thing we'll do is to get our crease line and to get our crease line we need to divide our, our tie measurement plus one inch that we imputed on the crouch line we need to divide it into two once like so the way i'm doing it in the video you divide your your crouch into two and then you get the midpoint that midpoint you take it to your knee and also mark the measurement then extend it to the hem of the trouser and also mark your measurements and the next thing you do is to connect these points together this line will serve as a crease line it's the essence of the crease line is to give the trouser a balance your trouser will have a, a balance when you make use of this method of the crease line your trouser will have a balance you will not have your trouser one part shifting to the side or the other part coming in towards the crouch no it's going to have a balance both on the crouch area and on the side of the trouser Now the next thing we'll do is to mark our round new measurements and this round new measurement will be taken on the nail line. The round nail I'm working with here is 22 inches divided by 2. Your round nail will be divided by 2 and divided by 2 will give us 11. What you will do now is to centralize this 11 that you have gotten. You'll use your measurement in this case. The midpoint of 11 is 5.5 .5, so that's the part that will be at the at the crease point and then you mark your 11. Then you proceed to the hem of your trouser and take your ankle measurement there. The ankle measurement I'm working with is the round ankle is 20 inches. You also centralize this measurement. 5 inches will be at the mid part of this crease line. And so you mark your 10 inches. And then you proceed to connecting both lines together. That is your new, your round new, and your round ankle with a straight ruler. Once you are done with that, you proceed to connecting your new to your crouch area. For this part, you will be needing a curved ruler. And so you place your curve like so and connect your crouch to your round uh, to your nail. Connect your crouch to your nail. And then on the other side of on the side on the on the side of the trouser rather, you also connect your nail to your crouch with your curve ruler like so. Next, at our center front, I'll come down by half an inch and then connect to the side of our trouser 
our side front for the trouser i'll connect with a straight ruler like that the, this is because our waist is not so straight so we just need to come down by half inch to have a balance at our waistline and so once that is done we have been able to draft our trouser pattern for the front this is the front block now we'll proceed to her back pattern before we proceed to the back pattern we need to cut out this um front block first and then once we are done cutting it out we'll proceed to the back pattern now i am done cutting out our front pattern and um, i've placed the front pattern on another pattern paper and what you see me doing here is to pin down the um, front pattern on the other pattern paper so that my pattern wouldn't um, shift if you do not have a pin you can go ahead and use your paper tape or any tape of your choice just to secure the front pattern on the other pattern paper please note that you can actually draft this trouser pattern directly on your fabric but because of this because of um tutorial purpose that is why you see me drafting it on a pattern paper and so for my viewers to be able to see and understand it properly that is why i'm drafting it on the pattern paper now for the back the first thing i would do is to transfer our crotch line um to the back pattern paper and that is what you see me doing there with the tracing wheel so i'm transferring the crouch the crouch line to the back pattern paper like so and then i trace out that line that will help me in the in drafting the back pattern so once this is done the next thing i'll do is to um take mark out two inches at that point i'm adding two inches on that crouch line for the back pattern and then also at the hip line i'm marking 1.25 1.25 inches and at the waistline i'm marking 1.25 inches and i'm going to connect these points together connect the waist 1.25 to the hip 1.25 and then with a curved ruler i'll connect the um hip to the crouch line like so the next thing we'll do now is to mark out our waistline for the back and on the waistline for the back we go up by 1.5 inches the essence of this is just to cover up our back our butts at the back because of course because of the butt at the back the back has more volume than the front so to cover up for that butt that is the essence of going up by 1.5 so we have our back more covered that way then the 1.5 is connected back to our waistline just the same waist at the side of the pantras are for the front then we we'll connect it back like so next we move to our new line and then on the new line we take two inches measurements for our back pattern and also on the ankle line which is the hem of the trouser we take two inches for our back trouser having done that we'll connect both points with a straight ruler like so and then we we'll connect the new line back to the crouch for the back with a curved ruler slightly curved not so curved so we connect it like so for the back once we are done with that the side of the pants both for the um, front pattern and the back pattern they are the same they have the same side for both sides so what i'm doing here is to label our pattern we have the knee line we have the crouch line we have the hip line we also have um the waist and the m line 
like so. Once we are done labeling, our pattern is actually ready to be transferred to fabric. If you have stayed so far to the to this point, please kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our video, also share with your friends, turn on a, your notification bell so that whenever a new video drops, you'll be notified. Thank you so much for taking your time to watch this tutorial. We hope you actually got value. Thank you for watching. Now what you see me doing here is to mark out the sides of our trouser pattern and just after this, I'll proceed to cutting out the back pattern and transferring the patterns to fabric. Now we have gone ahead to transfer our patterns to fabric and you will note that at the waistline I added 0.5 inches. This is just to um, the seam allowance to turn our facing because it's a bandless trouser and at the hemline I added 2, and a, two inches rather for our hem. To So here I went ahead to hold my center front and my center back and then cut out my facing after holding both sides and the dart and then I turned my facing fabric together with my pant trouser and also went ahead to top stitch on the facing so that is what you're seeing on this video. And yes this is what we have after sewing joining all parts together. Thank you so much for watching. See you in my next video. Bye for now.